In this video, we're going to be talking about what languages are the most relevant to Web3, which ones you should be thinking about learning, and what you should be using to build out your Web3 apps. Hey everyone, I'm Adam. I'm one of the founding engineers of Third Web, and at Third Web, we want to help developers build Web3 apps easily. Before we get into this video, make sure to drop a like and subscribe because we're going to be dropping a lot of uh, new Web3 content every day and you definitely don't want to miss out on that. So when we think about the languages that are relevant to Web3, you sort of have three major categories. So the first one is the contract languages and this is what you're going to use to build out decentralized contracts. Those are used to basically execute code on decentralized systems. And so for those, it's sort of specific to which chain you want to deploy on, which language you're going to be using, but we'll talk about a couple options there. Then the second category is when you actually want to build out your front-end applications. So there's a couple languages there that we're going to use, and those are kind of consistent across uh, applications. And the last piece is in the event that you want to add back-end and services to your applications, there are several options for back-end languages that allow you to do that, that you can easily integrate with Web3. Most of the popular chains right now are what's called EVM compatible. That means Ethereum virtual machine compatible. And to keep that simple, it's basically a specification for a type of way that you can execute code on the blockchain. And so that way has a couple different languages that you're allowed to use with it. And the most popular one is Solidity, of course. So Solidity is the language that you use for most Ethereum smart contract development. And that's sort of the most popular decentralized contract language right now. There are several other options you can use with EVM chains like Viper, for example. But those are sort of the most popular for EVM. And then you also have on the Solana side, Rust is the main contract development language, which is sort of a low level language that you might want to learn there. And probably as new chains start to develop, and we see more innovations like zero knowledge and other systems like that, there will be new languages rolling out that allow you to build contracts. For example, one interesting one is called Cairo that allows you to build zero knowledge proofs into your contracts, which uh, is a bit of a more advanced concept, but we'll uh, be talking about that in another video. So one of the nice things about Web3 is it switches up the paradigm of how you interact with data. So in typical applications, you would need a database and an API to interact with your data, and that requires a backend. But with Web3, because all of the data is decentralized, because it's on the blockchain, and you have these things called RPCs, which basically act as the APIs for the blockchain, you can actually interact with the blockchain without having to go through a backend. And so that's why front-end technologies are one of the most powerful things to learn in Web3. And the nice thing about that is they're completely consistent. Essentially, you're just going to be using JavaScript, HTML, and CSS for all of your front-end applications. And you can do most of what you would want to do with Web3 through those technologies. So technically, there aren't any limitations on what languages you could use on the backend for Ethereum. But really, you want to choose languages that are most commonly used in backends and also most commonly supported by Ethereum or uh, whatever blockchain you're using. So the most popular languages you would want to use are probably JavaScript and Python. Those are the most we're seeing use of because they're sort of just common languages. They have a lot of work into supporting Ethereum functionality. And some other notable languages that are gaining popularity are Golang, which is a popular uh, backend server language that's super fast, as well as Rust. And some people are even starting to use C Sharp. So there's a lot of pros and cons to each of these languages. And so I would say for beginners, for the most part, you just want to learn JavaScript for backend. The reason is because you're already going to have to learn it for front end. And so that's just a single language you could use for all of your apps. Uh, JavaScript also has a great ecosystem built around blockchain technology. So that's probably the easiest one to get started with. Another popular beginner choice is Python, just because it's quite easy to learn as a language and super nice uh, convenient syntax. I would say Go and Rust are a bit more of advanced choices. So both are low level systems languages. That means they're often a lot more difficult to learn, especially Rust is notoriously difficult to learn. Um, but those are good for building super fast, efficient backend servers. Usually that's not necessary for most projects, but uh, in that case, those languages are good options. And the last honorable mention, as I said, was C Sharp. Reason being, uh, a lot of gaming type platforms are built on C Sharp or C++, like Unreal Engine and Unity. And so for those, it's super convenient to be able to use that language natively with blockchain features. So my number one piece of advice for beginners would actually be just to start small and focus on something that's kind of a bite-sized piece you can do easily. And I would say in Web3 development, that would be just learning JavaScript and actually trying to ship something to production. And so what that means is I would just focus on learning JavaScript. Don't worry about all these other languages because you're going to have to use JavaScript no matter what. And I would personally focus on learning 
how do I build a basic front-end application with JavaScript? And then how do I just make a simple call to the blockchain with that? And maybe uh, if you can figure out a way, ThirdWeb's a perfect way to do this, to just deploy your own contract, you don't have to worry about coding it, and just interacting with that on the front end, that is just a great start to getting into Web3 development. So that was a brief overview of all of the languages that you might want to think about for Web3. Uh, just a reminder that if this video was helpful to you in any way, we would really appreciate it if you liked and subscribed because we're going to be posting consistent uh, Web3 educational content over the next few months, and we would love for you to subscribe. If you want to keep up with what we're doing at Third Web, make sure to follow us on Twitter. Also, if you ever need help with anything or you want to join our community, uh, then you can go to discord.gg thirdweb and join our community of over 30,000 developers building in Web3.